All right, this is our last lesson on new information until we have a test. Uh, we will be having a test next week, um, and you'll have a day to do some review, but um, this is our last new information here. So today, we'll be using limits to discuss whether a function is continuous or not. And before we get into that, I'd like to do a quick warm up where you guys see where you're already at on a couple topics we're going to need for today. Um, the first is knowing whether something's continuous. So I want you to decide um, which, if any, of these four are continuous. It might be all of them. It might be none of them. Check the ones that are continuous. Um, and if you miss this, that's fine. Um, the only one that we say is continuous is B. This one is considered to be continuous everywhere. And the reason is, remember that continuous means there are no breaks in it. Um, another way we think of it in a pre-calculus sense is that we can make it the entire way without picking up our pencil. So this wave, maybe it's a sine wave, I don't know, we can make without ever lifting up our pencil or pen, and we can make the whole thing. It's continuous, there are no breaks. Whereas this first one, there is a break. There is a break at x equals zero, there's an asymptote, and so there's a break here. So this the function is not continuous here. Um, this function is not continuous because I have to lift up my pencil to go from dot to dot to dot. And this function is not continuous. Even though there are arrows at the end, I still have to lift up my pencil to go from dot to dot to dot. Um, remember that continuous functions, uh, it's not about whether they keep going or not, it's about whether uh, you have there are breaks in between. So continuous isn't about whether there are arrows on the end, it's about whether um, whether there are breaks in the middle. So only B is continuous here. Okay, our second thing we're going to need for this lesson is, uh, I would say one of the primary ways on the AP exam that continuous functions are checked are um, piecewise functions, and they're pretty easy when you get good at them, but uh, let's make sure that our pre-calculus skills are uh, piecewise functions are all in the same place. So which of these three piecewise functions are continuous? I want you to actually graph all three of these. So pause the, uh, so take a minute, graph them on your own, um, and then use your graph to determine whether they are continuous. Uh, make sure you're not using like a graphing function like Desmos or something to graph this. This is something you want to be able to do without a calculator. Uh, this should be no calculator stuff. So um, to graph this one, there's a break at x equals 1. So when x is to the left of 1, the way we read this is when x is less than 1, that's left. When x is to the left, less than 1. When x is less than 1, so to the left, we're going to use this function. And so we want to use our algebra 1 skills. Uh, we know how to graph y equals 2x plus 3, it has a y-intercept of 3, it has a slope of 2, and I'm just putting the points on the graph because I already know that this is where it is to the left of 1. When we're to the right of 1, it's x squared plus 4, so it has a y-intercept of 4, and it's a quadratic from there. So 1 squared is 1, 2 squared is 4, um, negative 1 squared is 1, but we're only using the points here to the right of 1. So we're to the right of 1, we're using this x squared plus 4 1, and so we start making x squared plus 4, but we don't connect it because it doesn't start until x squared plus 1, so it starts until you're to the right of 1. So this function looks something like this, where it's, you know, a quadratic going off after you had a linear. Um, it's actually is very smooth, I should have made it more smooth, but it's curving up at this point. Um, okay, so is this function continuous? Yes, because there was no break. Notice it's the point that it meets up that's kind of important here. To the left, we know a linear function is never going to have a break. A quadratic function is never going to have a break. We're really worried about when they meet up. Okay, let's see if we feel comfortable with how to graph this next one. This next one is a rational function. And remember, with rational functions, we always want to start out by factoring and canceling if we can. So this is x minus 3 times x plus 3 because it's the difference of two squares. Um, divided by x plus 3, and this cancels out. And so there's a whole at x equals negative 3. Um, but it's okay, because it's actually saying it's only going to be this function when x is not equal to negative 3, which is lucky, because that would have been an undefined place. So when x is negative 3, 
um, there's going to be a hole. But otherwise, this function is the same. It's just the function x minus 3. Um, and x minus 3, it's going to be um, x minus 3 everywhere where x is not equal to negative 3. So there's like a hole here. But at x equals negative 3, the y value is 7. So the y value is like up here at 7 or something. Now, is this function continuous? No, this function is not continuous because there's a break right here. If this point had been uh, negative 6, then instead of going here, the point would have gone here, and now the function would be continuous because this filled in the hole. Remember, this is why we call it a removable discontinuity, is because if you just put the point right there, um, you will remove the discontinuity. Okay, so this function is not continuous. And the last function, x plus 2, when x is to the left of 0. Um, so let's see, so 1, 2 x plus 2 when x is to the left of 0. Um, and we're not going to keep going to the right because it's only to the left of 0. x equals 2 when x equals 0. Okay, so that's going to fill in that missing point. Notice that this was just less than, not less than or equal to, so I had a blank circle there at first. But when I saw that x was, uh, the, the y value was equal to 2 when x was 0, so it says the y value is equal to 2 when the x value is 0, I could fill in that circle. And lastly, we've got this exponential that's shifted up by 1. Um, we know exponential functions look like this, and they have a, uh, the exponential parent function has a point at 0, 1. And if we add 1, if we shift everything up by 1, now it'll have a point at 0, 2. So you should know that point on the parent function. And so when it gets shifted up, so it's going to be this exponential function when x is to the right of 0. So it's going to be at 0, 2. And so this one also is continuous, yes, because, you know, they all kind of meet up and there's no breaks. So that's um, a brief reminder about piecewise function. Hopefully it gets us all on the same page. Um, now, that's all pre-calculus stuff. Now we're going to get into the calculus definition of continuity. And again, some people ask, like, what is it we have to be able to prove? Well, this will often come up on the free response portion of the AP exam, which is half of the AP exam, and you do have to be able to prove this type of thing. And this is, you're gonna to need to prove it exactly like I show you here. So we talked a little bit when we were doing limits about how continuity could help us with limits. Well, now we're gonna talk about how limits can help us with continuity. So this says, and this is the calculus definition, a function is continuous at x equals a, so function is continuous at this point, if and only if the limit as x approaches a of f of x is equal to f of a. So f of a is some value. So this is f of a. It's a point. f of a is a y value, right? And we need the limit as x approaches a. Notice it's not got a plus or a minus. That means from both sides. As x approaches a, that y value needs to be getting closer and closer and closer to f of a. So this says the limit is getting closer and closer and closer. As x approaches a, the y values are getting closer and closer and closer to what the y value is at a. And that guarantees that there won't be any breaks because, hey, look, if you're coming in from both sides and you're getting closer and closer to the actual y value that's there, there won't be a break. Okay? This limit requires three things. The first is that you need to have the function defined. So f of a equals some value, okay? And this is just saying that, hey, at a, you can't have a blank circle. That, that, <laughs> if, if the function is undefined at x equals a, it's not gonna be continuous. There's gonna be a break, okay? So at x equals a, we need to have a point. Okay, so f of a is equal to something, okay? So that's, that's the first thing to be continuous. You, you can't just have like, nothing at a point. The second thing you need, and this goes to the limit, is what are the two things you need to have for the limit as x approaches a to, in this case, equal, since this is c something. So, it's, so f of a needs to equal something, needs to be defined. Um, and if it is defined, what does, what needs to be true for the limit to equal c? Well, the two things that need to be true is that the limit 
as x approaches a from the left of f of x, a is to equal c, and the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x needs to equal c. Um, and so this is just saying, look, okay, so we already have a point at a that's equal to c. And so we're saying, look, when you're coming in, I should have done this over here. I'll do this right here. When you're coming in from the left side, the y values need to get really close to a. So as you come in from the left, the y values better be get, getting uh, getting close to c. Sorry, I said a. The y values better be getting close to c. Otherwise, there's not going to be uh, there's going to be a break there. And this one says, as you're coming in from the right side, since the y value is c, as you're coming in from the right side, the y values need to get close to c. And together, all three of these things will make the function continuous. And these three things all need to be checked. So if you're checking whether something is continuous, the very first thing you're just saying is, hey, at that y value, is it defined, okay? The next thing is, um, is the limit from the left equal to that y value? And is the limit from the right equal to the y value? Let's look at how that looks here. We could talk about how to graph this, and in a second we will, but let's just check using the um, definition of continuity, because it's frankly a lot faster than than uh, than graphing sometimes. So to check if something is continuous at x is 3, what are the three things we need to check? We need to know that f of 3 is equal to something, okay? We need to know that the limit as x approaches 3 from the left is equal to that same something, and we need to know that the limit as x approaches 3 from the right is equal to that same something. We don't even care what it is, we just need to, it to all be the same. And so the first thing is we look at when x equals 3, what is it going to be? And we should know that on piecewise functions we look for the or equals to. Um, so when x is less than or equals to 3, we're going to use this one. When x is bigger than 3, we will use this one. This is the the left side and this is the right side and it's going to correspond very well to our limits. So the, the left side and equal, so this is also at that point, um, we're going to use x equals 3. So the limit as x approaches, sorry, f of 3, we're going to use this and we're just going to plug it in. So f of 3 equals 3 squared plus 5. 3 squared is 9, 9 plus 5 is 14. So, if f of 3 equals 14, what does the limit from the left and the limit from the right have to be equal to? Well, they both have to be 14, right? We can't have a gap. And so what we want to check is, does the limit from the left equal 14? Well, of course it will, because this function is, uh, it's, it's a continuous function. We know x squared plus 5 is a parabola, and it will be this parabola until you get to 3. So we know that, you know, when you've got a left-sided limit with an equals to it, uh, yeah, of course the y value will equal the limit from the left because the limit from the left is going there. And we can do this by direct substitution. So when we're doing the limit from the left, we're going to be using this function, and we can just use direct substitution. So the limit as x approaches 3 from the left is equal to the exact same thing because we can use our direct substitution technique. 3 squared plus 5 is also 14, so these are the same so far. The last thing is we need the limit from the right to also be um, 14. And now we can use the function as it's coming from the right side. And this is going to be the function we use to the right. And again, we can just use direct substitution. It's a pretty simple method. We can just plug in 3, and we get uh, 5 times 3 minus 1. Uh, 15 minus 1 is 14. Now, what is it that you actually need to show on the AP exam? Do you need to show these calculations? No, you do not you need to write these three things. This is what you need to have written. You need to have written f of 3 equals 14, limit as x approaches 3 from the left of f of x equals 14, limit as x approaches 3 from the right of f of x equals 14. So f of x is continuous at x equals 3. By the way, the AP exam is like pretty generous um, with abbreviations as long as it's clear. Um, we'll be talking about what abbreviations you can use. Like, you can use DNE. They'll know what you're talking about. They'll know that means does not exist. If you put is Kant period, like, 
at x equals three and it was asking you about continuous, like, um, they'll be like, yeah, okay, that's clear what you're talking about. Um, they're actually complete assholes about like certain things, but they're not jerks about, um, like whether something like you use an abbreviation or not. So let's look at each of these four points, point A at x equals A, at x equals B, at x equals C, and at x equals D. At these four x values, we want to discuss the continuity. So real quick, is, is f of x continuous at x equals A? And we say, no, <laughs> no, it is not continuous. Because what? Why is it not continuous here? Well, let's use our definition. Um, the first thing we always check for is, is the function defined? Is the function defined at x equals a? Yes, here's that point. So it's not because the function's not defined. The first thing is, okay, f of c is, f of a is equal to c, great. But what is not true? Well, the limit is equal to a different thing. So the limit is equal to this value. As you get really, really close, the y values are getting close to this value, but the limit is different. So the issue is that the limit as x approaches uh, a of f of x is not equal to um, f of a. So this one is defined, right? So that's always what we check first is, is it defined? But the limit doesn't equal that. Okay, let's look at b. Um, is the function continuous at x equals b? And the answer is no. This time, does, uh, is, is f of b defined? Yeah, f of b is defined, there's a point right here. But the problem is the limit doesn't exist. The limit as x approaches b from the left does not equal um, the limit as x approaches b from the right. And we need all three of these things to be equal. So sometimes we'll just say um, they'll, they're all equal to the same thing. And sometimes we the thing we're looking for is like, is the limit as x approaches a, you know, from the left equal to the limit as x approaches a from the right is equal to f of a. Like we're just looking for these three things to all be the same thing. So they're all equal to c, right? Um, Okay, let's talk about c. Is the function c continuous? Is the function continuous at x equals c? And the answer is no. And it's because what? Well, here, f of c is undefined. And so uh, it doesn't equal a value. If there, is, if there is no defined value, then the function can't be continuous. How about at x, x equals d? Is the function continuous? Yes. And the answer is because um, we need three things here. We need um, f of d is defined, and it's the same as the limit as x approaches d of f of x from the left, which is the same as the limit as x approaches d from the right. Now, it's it's necessary when you're discussing continuity to discuss why the limit exists. This is proving, this proves that the limit exists. And then it's also, the limit not only exists, but it's equal to the y value there. So the limit, as you get really close, the y values are getting really close to the actual point that's there. Okay. Um, so hopefully we're feeling good about that. Let's talk about... Um, whether, let's talk about continuity, not just at a point, but on an interval. We say that a function is continuous from A to B. Notice we're not including the endpoints. If it's continuous everywhere in between. So uh, we could say um, up above, oh, I guess this was G of X. Man, I used F everywhere here. I should have used G, G, G. I should have put G of X here. Man, I made a lot of mistakes up there. G, G, G. G. Okay, so all of these should have been G. Okay, so um, let's talk about G of X and what intervals it is continuous on. We could say G of X is continuous on, we can say the open interval from 
negative infinity to a because it's continuous everywhere in between negative infinity and a. Um, we're talking about x values here. And we can use a union here. It's continuous between a and b because every point between a and b is continuous. It's continuous between b and c. And you'll notice I used a bracket here. We'll talk about that later. Um, and I used an open parenthesis here. We'll talk about that in a little while. But it's continuous everywhere between b and c. And this function is continuous between c and infinity. So all, oh my god, this was off the graph. Oh no, guys. Uh, the function is continuous between negative infinity and a. So all of these x values it's continuous on. The function is continuous between a and b. The function is continuous between b and c. The function is continuous between c and d. Oh, sorry, between c and infinity. There's actually no break at d. We want to write it, we wouldn't want to say like between c and d union d and infinity. This is using too many intervals. We want to um, not show any breaks if we don't need to, okay? Um, so this wouldn't be good. This would be good. So um, yeah, we can say it's uh, continuous on all these in-between points if it's continuous at all those points, okay? Um, so we talk about two types of continuities. Um, removable discontinuities, we also call, what's another name for removable discontinuities? Um, we call these holes. And this is the only type of removable discontinuities. Um, and then there are two types of non-removable discontinuities, uh, asymptotes and jumps. And the difference is that with holes, the limit as x approaches a of f of x exists. What's another way of saying that the limit as a, how do you prove that the limit as x approaches a exists? Well, the limit as x approaches a from the left of f of x is equal to the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x. So if the limit from both sides is the same um, and the limits exist, uh, then even if it's not continuous, it will be a removable discontinuity. Um, asymptotes fail to exist because the limit as x approaches a um, of f of x, d and e, because it goes to infinity or negative infinity from the right and the left, right? Um, jumps happen because the limit as x approach of a of f of x from the left do exist, but they don't equal the limit as x approaches a from the right of f of x. We'll talk about these in a second. So this first one is, is it a removable discontinuity or a non-removable discontinuity? This is a removable discontinuity because the limit exists. Even though there's a break, the function is not defined here. Um, the limit as x approaches a from the left is equal to the limit as x approaches a from the right. And the only thing that's wrong here is that um, those are not equal to f of a because it's not defined at x equals a. But this is easily removable by just saying like, hey, okay, so we're just gonna define a new function that's f of x everywhere where x does not equal a and x equals whatever this limit is when x equals a. And that just fills in the hole. So if we just say like, oh, we just need the limit we just need the function value to be what the limit is, and now they all match. Um, and so that's how you remove a hole. It's that you choose a value that's equal to the limit, and it will make the hole go away. Now, what type is this? Is this um, removable or non-removable, and what type? This is non-removable. Because the limit, if I call this A, as x approaches a of f of x, d and e. Um, in this case, it's equal to infinity, but the limit doesn't exist. And so like, there's nowhere to put a point. You couldn't just like put a point somewhere to fix this. There's no way to like choose a point here that would magically fix it. Whereas here, okay, I could choose wrong points, but there was also like one right point to choose to make there not be a break. Um, so here, this is called an asymptote because the limits are going to infinity. So if the limit is going to infinity, it's an asymptote. And the last one is what type of removal or what type of discontinuity? It's a non-removable. And this type is called a jump. And here, 
Um, there is no asymptote, um, but the limit as x approaches a from the left does not equal the limit as x approaches a from the right. And um, as you're coming in from both sides, it's not the same. And so there's nowhere to just put a single point. I can't just like put a point somewhere. Like even if I filled it in here, the function's still got to break. There is no point I can place I can put a point to fix it. So removable discontinuities can always, holes can be fixed by just putting a point there and now it's not a hole anymore. All right, let's get some practice on this stuff and see where we're at. We want to discuss the continuity. We want to be as specific as possible. Hopefully you know what this graph looks like. Um, we want to discuss... Uh, where it's not continuous, where it is continuous. If a function, I don't know if I said this in the front, but if a function is continuous from negative infinity to infinity, we say it's continuous everywhere or everywhere continuous. Everywhere continuous sounds a little bit more haughty and I like it, um, but I'll probably say continuous everywhere. Um, so if the function is continuous everywhere, um, we say continuous everywhere. Otherwise, we say the intervals it's continuous on. And so what we're looking for in a function is where is it not continuous? So um, for f of x, where is f of x not continuous? And we should know that this is not continuous at x equals zero. And that's because whenever you divide by zero, um, the function won't be continuous. The things we're always looking for is you can't do square root of a negative can't divide by zero, um, and you can't do the log of a zero or a negative. Almost all functions are continuous unless you're doing the square root of a negative, you're dividing by zero, or you're doing the log of a zero or a negative. Uh, and so those are the things you're looking for. It's like, okay, well, it'll be continuous everywhere except where I'm doing square root of a negative, uh, dividing by zero, or doing log. Well, here there's no logs or square roots, so it's just where am I dividing by zero? The only place we'll be dividing by zero is if x equals zero. So it's not continuous at x equals zero. And so what we say is that this is continuous on the interval from negative infinity to zero, and then again from zero to infinity. And we should feel okay about that. How about this next one? You try this on your own. Um, where is this function not continuous? Uh, the only We don't even need to like factor and cancel or do anything, we just need to look like, well, what would make it not be continuous? There's no square roots, there's no logs, and so we're just looking for where we would be dividing by zero, and so it's not continuous at x equals one. And so uh, how do we write that? How do we write where the function is continuous? We say it's continuous, continuous on the interval from negative infinity until one, and then it's continuous again we put a union here from one to infinity. One is the only place it has a, a, a break. Um, by the way, this one, the way it looks, if you guys don't remember from algebra two and pre-calculus, one over x looks like this. It has an asymptote at x equals zero. Um, this graph actually doesn't have an asymptote. It has a hole. If you did factor and cancel, we would see that this has a hole and it has a hole at x equals one. Um, but either way, like there's a place where it's not continuous. Okay, the last one, um, where is sine of x not continuous? And we should know, just first of all, you should know the graph of sine of x from pre-calculus, but if you don't, uh, is it ever dividing by zero? No. Is there any square root or log? No. And so this is uh, always continuous, and the way we write that is, we say, continuous everywhere, or you could say everywhere continuous, or you could say it is continuous on negative infinity to infinity, like that. So these are fine. You could also say everywhere continuous. Those are all fine. Okay, guys, um, let's talk about creating continuity. What should we do um, at x equals zero? So right now, f of zero equals one. And we can see that the limit as x approaches zero does not equal f of zero, and so the function is not continuous at x equals zero. Um, what value should be assigned to f of zero to make this continuous? Um, and the answer is f of zero should equal zero. And if we put f of zero equals zero, 
um, now all of a sudden the functions continue. So if we change f of 0 equals 1 to f of 0 equals 0, now there is no break at x equals 0. It's continuous at x equals 0. Um, is the function continuous at x equals 1? And um, if not, why not? And we should know that at x equals 1, the function is not continuous, and the reason is, is the limit doesn't exist. The limit as x approaches 1 from the left of f of x does not equal the limit as x approaches 1 from the right of f of x. And since the limit doesn't exist, it can't be continuous. That's one of the things we need to check for. So, since it's not continuous, what value needs to be assigned to f of 1 to make the function continuous? And the answer is... It's not possible. The reason it's not possible is this is not a removable discontinuity. This is not just a hole. When the limit doesn't exist, let's go back to our last page. If the limit doesn't exist, it is non-removable. This is not a removable because the limit didn't exist. If the limit from the left and the limit from the right aren't the same as each other, it's not possible to remove the discontinuity. Okay, so this is a common style of AP question is given this, um, given this function everywhere where x is not equal to negative 1, what value do we need here when x does equal to 1? And so uh, we're going to define what is this value. So what is f of negative 1? So f of negative 1 equals what to make it continuous? Well, let's use our limit definition. What do we need to be true for x to be continuous at x equal to x equals negative 1? We need the limit as x approaches negative 1 of f of x from the left to be equal to the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the right. And we need that to be equal to f of negative 1. Well, this is what we're looking for. And so um, what we need to find is what the limit is equal to and make it equal, make this equal to the limit. Um, so we need to do this limit. And that's something you guys have already been working on. What is this limit? So what is the limit as x approaches negative 1? Because this is, um, it's going to be this one everywhere except x equals negative 1. So like from both sides, it's going to be this thing. Um, and so we need to do this limit. If the limit doesn't exist, if this is like an asymptote or something, then the answer will be it's impossible. But if the limit does exist, we're just going to want whatever the limit value is. Well, we're going to want to put f of x, we're going to want to make it that value at negative 1 so that it's uh, we, we fill in the hole. So as x goes to negative 1 of f of x, what what is that value? Um, and hopefully you chose to use factor and cancel here and you recognize that you first try to do direct substitution and when you do, you get 0 over 0, so that's indeterminate. And since you've got an indeterminate form, uh, we can use factor and cancel the, the numerator factors into x plus 4 times x plus 1. Uh, 4 and 1 multiply to make 4, and they add to be 5. And we can cancel out the x plus 1. And so what's left over is x plus 4, and now we can just do direct substitution. So um, limit as x goes to negative 1 of x plus 4 is equal to negative 1 plus 4, which is 3. And since the limit is equal to 3, we want f of negative 1 to equal 3. Because we want the limit, the limit, this was equal to 3. And so we want the uh, y value there to also equal 3. That way there's no break. And what we're doing is we're just making it so that, you know, this function at negative 1 is equal to 3. So the limit was equal to 3, and so we just put in the y value there, and now it's continuous. It was a removable discontinuity. Now, if we had done direct substitution and found that you got like 6 over 0, what would this have told us? This would have told us that there was an asymptote, that the limit, um, remember if it's a number that's not 0 over 0, that's not indeterminate. That's an asymptote. And then there would be no way to make this true because the limit doesn't exist. Okay, these look kind of tricky, and they're pretty easy. Um, if we just use our limit definition, uh, okay, if we just use our limit definition, we want the function value to equal the limit. And so um, let's first, by, I always like to start with the function value. What is the only place this is going to be discontinuous? What's the only spot this could be discontinuous? And the place we're looking at is x equals 2, because this is a cubic and this is a quadratic. 
cubic functions don't have any breaks in them. Quadratics don't have any breaks in them. It's only like where they meet up. Like, is that going to be connected or not? Is it going to be a jump or is it not going to be a jump? And so um, what we I like to do is I like to start with what is f of 2? That's the one place we're worried about. f of 2, what we're going to use the equals to, is equal to 8. And that needs to equal the limit as x approaches 2 from the left, which needs to equal the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. What is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left? Well, I'm going to rewrite this below. The limit as x approaches 2 from the right, well, left, well, we can just use direct substitution. This is the left side. And so we can use direct substitution, and it's exactly the same, obviously, because it's the same function when x is less than 2 as when x is equal to 2. Now we need to make it equal to the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. How do we do the limit as x approaches 2 from the right? Well, we just choose the function that's coming in from the right side. So everywhere to the right of 2, we use this. And so as you come in from the right side, we can just use direct substitution. And when x is, we just plug in 2, and we get a times 2 squared. This is an equation we can solve. 8 equals 2 squared is 4. a times 4 is 4a. And so this is an easy equation to solve. We can solve it and get a equals 2 by dividing by 4 on both sides. So a is 2. That's it. And that's what we're looking for. We wanted to find what a was to make it continuous. If we have 2x squared when x is to the right of 2, and x cubed when x is to the left of 2, that function will be continuous. How about one with multiple breaks? Well, if you have multiple breaks, again, the function y equals 2 is continuous everywhere. The function ax plus b is linear. It's continuous everywhere. The function y equals negative 2 is continuous everywhere. And so we're only looking where they meet up. We need to look at x equals negative 1, and x equals 3. And we're going to do these separately. So um, let's check if x is continuous at x equals negative 1. And so at x equals negative 1, the first thing we're going to look for is f of negative 1. What is f of negative 1? f of negative 1 is 2 because that's where the or equals 2 is. And we want to make sure that is equal to the limit as x approaches 2 from the left. And what is the limit? And, and that needs to be equal to the limit as x approaches 2 from the right. So the y value is equal to the limit from both sides. And so 2 is equal to, what is the limit as x approaches 2 from the left? Well, here's the function we're using as you're coming in from the left. Oh, I put 2 here. I'm sorry. As x approaches 1 from the left and 1 from the neg negative 1 from the left and negative 1 from the right. Man, it's so embarrassing. Um, so what is the um, y value as x approaches negative 1 from the left? Well, as you're coming in from the left side of negative 1, we'll use this. As you're coming in from the right side of negative 1, we'll use it's this function everywhere between negative 1 and 3. So between negative 1 and 3, we'll be using this function. And so this is the function we will use direct substitution on. So it's equal to, so we're going to use direct substitution by just plugging in negative 1 for x, and so we get negative a plus b. So we get this nice equation that says 2 equals negative a plus b. Oh man, my battery is low, and I don't know how to get rid of it right now. It's like stopping me from being able to see my camera. Okay, hopefully I didn't end this video. Um, okay, so notice we have two variables, but only one equation. This is not possible to solve. We need a system of equations when we've got two variables. So we're going to need another equation. Luckily, we're going to have it. It's going to be pretty easy because we also need to make sure it's continuous at x equals 3. That's the other place there could be a gap. And so what is f of 3? f of 3 is when x is equal to 3, the y value is defined, and it's negative 2. Okay? We need that to equal the limit as x approaches 2 from, sorry, x approaches 3 from the left. And we need that to equal the limit as x approaches 3 from the right. Okay, so x approaches 3 from the left. Well, this function is to the left of 3. So we're going to get negative 2 equals. We can use direct substitution because there's nothing funny going on here. When we put in 3 for x, x is 3. We'll get 3a plus b. And um, the limit from the right, from the right side, it's also equal to negative 2. So we just need to pick one of these. 
And here we have our system of equations. We've got 2 equals negative a plus b. And we've got negative 2 equals 3a plus b. And you can solve this using any technique you want. Um, go ahead and do that on your own. Um, I like to use, I think I'm going to use um, substitution here. Elimination also would have been great if I had multiplied everything by negative 1 and just added the two equations, the b's would cancel out. Or I could multiply everything by 3 and uh, add the two equations and the a's would cancel out. But it looks pretty easy to solve for b here. I'm just going to move the a to the other side and get b is equal to a plus 2. So I just added a to both sides to get b by itself. And now I can substitute a plus 2 in for b. So negative 2 equals 3a plus a plus 2. And so I'm going to move the 2 over to the other side by subtracting 2. So negative 4 equals 4a. a equals negative 1. And once I've solved for a, I can go back in and find b. So a is negative 1. And so negative 1 plus 2 equals b. And so b is negative 1. Uh, sorry, b is positive 1. And so that answers the question it asked, find a and b. And we found a and b that made this true. So we're just using our limit definition and re recognizing that at piecewise functions, we can just choose where it matches up. So we're going to find where it matches up. Okay, the last thing, and this is a little thing, it's um, not super important on the AP exam, is what about if a function is, how do you say if a function is continuous on the closed interval or not? I, I mentioned this early, earlier, and the definition is a one-sided limit. You just need to do a one-sided limit, and you say, look, if you want to know, so if this is, um, if we want to talk about the interval this is continuous on, so here's one and here is four, <clears throat> is like what your intuition is will probably match up most of the time. We say this is continuous on the interval from one to four, and we include the endpoints here. And the reason is, here's our definition, is it's continuous on the open interval from one to four, all the places between one and four, it's continuous. Plus, if you take the limit from the right of the left endpoint, um, it equals the function value on the left. If you take a limit from the, the left on the right side, it equals the function value on the right side. And go ahead and guess, uh, say what you think this one will be, and you'll probably be right. This one is continuous on the interval from 1 to 4 open on the left and closed on the right. And the reason is on the left, the um, limit does not equal the y value because the y value is undefined. Okay. How about this one? What do you think? Where is it continuous on? You'll probably be right. This is continuous on the interval from 1 to 4 with including the right limit but not including the limit. And again, it's because of the definition, the limit as x approaches one from the right side does not equal the function value. Here there is a function value, but it's not equal to the limit. And the last one's a little bit tricky. Um, go ahead and try it and test your intuition here. Um, and the light is changing, it's changing how bright it is in here. I hope this doesn't affect the video too much. Um, so this is continuous on the interval from one to three because the limit from the right on the left side is equal to the function value, and the limit from the right uh, on, a, on the right side, the limit from the left on the right side is equal to the function value. Union, it's also equal from, it's also continuous from three to four bracket. And, and the reason this is correct is because on the right side, the limit from the right does not equal the function value, but the limit from the left does equal the function value of that endpoint. So that's not a huge uh, deal, but it's something to keep in mind. All right, guys, hopefully you feel okay about these. We do have a test coming up, not next class, but the class after. So um, there we go.